Hello and welcome to a like review. Today I want to talk about wide angle lenses and how we can use them to capture better photographs and perhaps explore some potentials into filming with them as well. What is important to understand here is that wide angle lenses gives a different perspective than what our eyes are used to. For example, if you are choosing a 16 millimeter lens, which 16, 18, 21 millimeter trial mar is a good example, you are going to get a very stretched view. But that I mean is that you're going to get a very wide angle of view. Now, to some extent, that is a wonderful thing because if you are about to capture a beautiful vista or a panorama of a certain landscape or an urban space, then it could be a wonderful thing to have. That way you can capture the essence of the space or the surrounding. But there are times when you want to use them for other reasons. For example, if you want to make an object appear distorted or grotesque, it's one way to do it. What I mean by that is if you are photographing, for example, churches in France, they have these beautiful sculptures and you could bring those out and separate it from the background if you are able to use a very wide angle lens, which we will get into in our future uh, discussions. But right now, what I want to discuss with you is using it in circumstances that we are not commonly using them. For example, most of the times when you do wide angle photography, you are doing it under good lighting conditions when it is perhaps sunny or at the time when the sun is about to set where you're getting the best of the light's exposure rays. But what if you are to use it at nighttime? For example, take Tri Al Mar, the, the widest aperture you can have is f4. What that means is that it's a very slow lens. Comparatively, you could have a 21 millimeter at 1.4, which is a similar, a very fast lens. So let's take the example of Trial Mar. You want to get as much of the scenery in focus as you could possibly do so, and you want to reduce the amount of noise. For that, you will need a tripod. And tripods are wonderful instruments because they allow you to do long exposure poses. And long exposures means that you can choose a very low ISO, like 200, and open your aperture to probably f8 or f11 and capture everything in crisp, sharp focus. And that is where the camera's abilities are best shown. For example, if you take a Leica M240 or a Leica M10, you are going to get a very nice color rendition and sharpness with the combination of a good lens. And something that people often miss is the fact a good lens is the most crucial part of capturing a good image. And capturing a good image requires you to be in focus and know the limitations of the lens. For example, what do you do if you are using a Leica Tri Almar? Do you shoot it at 16, 18, or 21 millimeters? Or would you use a lens like Simulux 21 millimeter and you shoot it wide open? Now, these are different elements. They give different aspects because if you are going to do long exposure and you're going to have f8 or f11 as your aperture, then you're going to get everything in focus. But if you wanted to, for example, isolate an object from the background, fast lenses like the Simulaxes allows you to do that. And that is where the artistic expression becomes important. Now, I'm going to show you several photographs I've taken in the city of Vancouver at nighttime using long exposures and see how those colors just come out alive and gives you a, the sense of space. And some of the photographs you are going to be seeing are objects that are still in motion. So you get the motion blur. 
which is something you may want to add into your photography. And finally, I want to mention about filming. Now, filming in under low light situations means that you will have to use a wide aperture. And that means if you are using f1.4 of the Simulux, you're going to have a very shallow depth of field. But if you are in focus, you will be able to capture things in beautiful separation from their background. And that will give a very unique feel. Now, you're going to tell me probably that Leica M10 doesn't have video function. No, it doesn't. What Leica has done is gone back from video capabilities where all the other cameras are offering and left like cameras like Leica T at HD format when the smallest Sony cameras are now offering 4K. Panasonic is offering 4K. But if you are able to take a lens from Leica that has this beautiful color renditioning and sharpness and place it on a Sony or a, or a Panasonic, you are going to get that motion. Now, we are talking about Leicas, and I'm only showing you that there are other applications you can use these lenses, and the wide-angle lenses give you those opportunities. And it is for this very reason that Leicas, as, as far as lenses are concerned, are gems that you can utilize. Of course, they are expensive, but you have to compare what you're getting from a Leica lens to what you would get from another type of lens made from a different manufacturer. Why are you paying that extra bit? For one, for example, 21 millimeter f1.4 is a very fast lens. There's practically no competitor to that. So would you want to use that? Of course, there's a, a tool that gives you much more flexibility if you are, for example, photographing handheld, or if you're filming, you can use it in low light situations. Similarly, for example, if you are in under good lighting search circumstances, you can use a like a trial mar to capture good videos. And those videos will show the difference very drastically when you compare it to other lenses. Now, one of the things that really is critical when you're doing filming is to watch out for things like chromatic aberration. That purple fringing will destroy the beautiful images that you might be getting. So this is the reason there is that extra bit of money that you pay to capture that beautiful imagery. Whether your passion is photography or film, Leica lenses gives you that opportunity. As far as cameras are concerned, well, things still are moving forward. And one day maybe we will see, for example, Leica SL offering a much higher quality video capabilities. Or we might see the return of the Leica M with a video function. Because what dictates a, a company's future is how much they listen to their customers. And I think a lot of people were disappointed when Leica stopped offering video capabilities in Leica M10. And future is something that we dictate as consumers and users of Leica cameras. And I thank you for watching this review. And please, we are not supported by some photography company. We're not supported by some photo photography shop. We're not even sponsored by any other company. So in order for us to bring you these reviews, we ask that you make a small donation, even if it's $5 or $1 or $2, because what happens is, even though we make these films, these videos, without any reward back. We are making these videos so that there is an archive, there is information available for you to make a better decision. And for that very reason, we ask that you click on the link, make that small donation to help us to bring you more reviews and help us keep our website up. 
and have a good day. Hello, 